In the grand narrative of Saudi Arabia's monarchy and its wealth, men often dominate. Yet, behind the veils of tradition and protocol, a realm exists where women wield significant power and influence. In a kingdom that embraces polygamy, it's not widely known that a queen sits quietly behind the throne. Her story is compelling as it is elusive. Let me take you inside the life of Saudi Arabia's wealthiest queen, Fada bint Fala al Hithlain. Fada is not merely another name among the king's spouses. She is a queen, the consort of King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, embodying grace, strength and immense wealth in the heart of Saudi Arabia, a kingdom steeped in tradition and history. Born into the ancient Ajman tribe, Fada's early life amidst the vast desert was defined by Bedouin traditions. Her upbringing starkly contrasts with the opulence that awaited her, yet it endowed her with a deep understanding of Saudi society's intricate tapestry. In 1984, Fada entered into a strategic marriage with King Salman, a union meticulously designed to bridge the gap between Saudi Arabia's tribal and royal classes. This alliance was more than a personal connection. It merged two worlds, catering to the conservative elements within the kingdom. Fada's Bedouin roots provided King Salman a vital link to conservative Saudi society, torn between tradition and modernity. This strategic union had a profound impact on the Saudi royal family and the nation's trajectory. Her influence as King Salman's third spouse quietly permeated the corridors of power, her tribal wisdom guiding decisions within the palace. This partnership was not merely marital, it was a strategic alliance shaping Saudi Arabia's future. Behind Mohammed bin Salman's rise, known as MBS, stands a guiding force, his mother, Fahda bint Fala al Hithlain. Her role transcends that of a queen, she is a mother whose wisdom has shaped MBS's journey. Progressive, yet conservative, calculated, yet audacious. From his youth, Fada recognized MBS's potential, nurturing his intelligence, charisma, and ambition. As MBS navigated the political landscape, Fada's influence quietly steered his decisions, guiding him through the complexities of Middle Eastern politics. While Fada's counsel remains largely private, insiders attest to its significant impact on MBS's political instincts. Her wisdom ensures that his decisions are informed and strategic, particularly during pivotal moments in Saudi Arabia's political landscape. During pivotal moments like the Saudi purge of 2017, Fada played a crucial, albeit discreet, role in advising on significant governance changes that reverberated throughout the Middle East. Her counsel was instrumental in shaping decisions that transformed Saudi Arabia's political landscape. In the intricate realm of Saudi politics, Fada navigates as both a beacon of guidance and a unifying force. Her advice holds considerable sway for her son, influencing decisions of profound consequence. Yet Fada's impact transcends mere advisory. She plays a pivotal role in bridging divides among diverse factions within Saudi Arabia, leveraging her deep tribal knowledge and acute understanding of the kingdom's intricate power dynamics. Amidst sweeping transformations in Saudi Arabia, Fada bint Fala al Hithlain, King Salman's third spouse, has been a driving force in shaping the kingdom's social and cultural reforms. While Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, is often recognized for these reforms, Fada's seasoned counsel ensures their resonance with the broader populace. Her involvement in formulating reforms, particularly those empowering women, has been crucial in fostering a more inclusive and progressive Saudi society. Fada's profound understanding of Saudi society and her steadfast advocacy for women's rights have guided policies aimed at dismantling barriers and fostering opportunities for women to thrive. Her commitment is evident, especially in advancing women's education, where she champions access to quality education as transformative. Through her philanthropic efforts, Fada has championed initiatives focused on women's education, equipping them with essential tools for success in a rapidly evolving world. Her dedication to women's empowerment extends beyond education. She actively engages in initiatives promoting women's participation in the workforce, advocating for equal opportunities and career advancement. Fada's influence has been pivotal in driving policies aimed at dismantling traditional barriers and fostering a more inclusive Saudi society. While Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, often takes the lead in these reforms, Fada's strategic guidance ensures their resonance with the broader public.
Her adeptness at bridging tradition with progress has been instrumental in shaping policies that modernize Saudi Arabia while preserving its cultural essence. Fahuda's deep tribal wisdom and keen understanding of power dynamics make her an invaluable advisor in navigating social change. Her involvement in formulating and implementing reforms goes beyond policymaking, engaging closely with stakeholders to ensure their success. Fada's cultural insight has cemented her role as a significant voice in shaping the narrative of these reforms. Her commitment to women's empowerment and broader social change has made Fada a formidable figure within Saudi Arabia's social fabric. Her philanthropic endeavors, particularly in women's education and healthcare, have left a profound impact on Saudi society. Fada pursues these transformative goals incrementally, embodying responsible influence in her endeavors. Alongside Fada, other Arab queens have also made remarkable strides. Queen Rania of Jordan, with a net worth of $750 million, is renowned for her advocacy in public health, education, and women's rights, notably opposing honor killings. Born in Kuwait, she met Prince Abdullah II bin Al Hussein in 1993, marrying him six months later, becoming a global advocate for progressive causes in the Arab world. Queen Lala Salma of Morocco, worth $2.1 billion, is the first wife of a Moroccan ruler to receive public acknowledgement and a royal title. Though she hasn't been seen in official capacity since December 2017, amid speculation of divorce from King Mohammed VI, she has represented Morocco globally and championed cancer and HIV AIDS prevention in Africa. Sheikha Moza of Qatar, also valued at $2.1 billion, co-founded and chairs the Qatar Foundation for Education, Science and Community Development. Recognized for her promotion of education and community development, she holds honorary degrees from prestigious universities. Queen Saleha of Brunei, with an estimated net worth of $28 billion, serves as Brunei's queen consort and has supported numerous charitable causes while promoting Bruneian traditions and environmental conservation. While the wealth of the Saudi royal family is often discussed, the breadth and impact of their contributions to societal progress and global advocacy are less frequently recognized. They've amassed vast fortunes through ventures spanning oil, real estate, technology investments, and sports. Saudi Arabia has been deeply engaged in a multi-billion dollar sports investment project for several years. The Saudi royal family's wealth is reputedly in the hundreds of billions, derived from their extensive global investments, though the exact figures remain elusive due to their diversified and private nature. Their wealth isn't merely a status symbol, it wields substantial influence in global politics. Rooted in oil revenues since its discovery in the 1930s, the Saudi royal family's wealth is anchored in Saudi Aramco, the world's largest state-controlled oil company. Their control over this industry not only enriches them, but also grants significant geopolitical power, shaping global oil dynamics. These oil revenues have funded both the luxurious lifestyles of the royal family and extensive government projects aimed at modernizing Saudi Arabia. Their investments span infrastructure, education, healthcare and other sectors, pivotal in transforming the nation into a global economic powerhouse. Beyond oil, diversification has been crucial, evident in strategic investments through entities like the Kingdom Holding Company. This conglomerate boasts a diverse portfolio, including real estate, technology and finance, with stakes in global giants like Citigroup and Twitter. Luxury hotels and major infrastructure projects further showcase their financial prowess and global influence. These investments not only generate substantial revenue, but also symbolize their opulent lifestyle and expansive global footprint. Embracing the digital age, the royal family has strategically invested in technology and innovation, backing tech companies, startups, and venture capital funds. This forward-thinking approach ensures their wealth adapts and grows in a rapidly evolving global landscape. Their grand residences, epitomized by the Al Yama Palace in Riyadh, exemplify their immense wealth. Spanning four million square feet, this architectural marvel features lavish Italian marble interiors, intricately adorned ceilings, and a wealth of luxury amenities, from a private movie theater to bowling alleys and opulent swimming pools. These investments and properties not only underline the Saudi royal family's economic might, but also their strategic vision for the future, solidifying their position as key players on the global stage. 
The Saudi royal family owns an array of prestigious properties worldwide, not limited to the Al Yama Palace. These residences serve as venues for governmental functions and meetings, reflecting their considerable influence and financial prowess. Situated amidst lush gardens, the al Aja Palace on the outskirts of Riyadh provides a tranquil setting for significant gatherings. Similarly, the Erga Palace in central Riyadh hosts various official events, further highlighting the family's stature. Beyond Saudi Arabia, their portfolio includes estates that serve as luxurious retreats and symbols of global influence. These properties are meticulously maintained, offering unparalleled comfort and extravagance. For instance, the Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida, acquired in the 1980s, sprawls over 20 acres with a mansion boasting Atlantic Ocean views, private beach access, tennis courts, and a world-class spa. Another standout is the Chateau Louis XIV near Paris, a masterpiece inspired by Versailles, featuring elaborate gardens, ornate interiors, and modern amenities, a testament to the family's refined taste and opulent lifestyle. These residences aren't just lavish retreats, but symbols of power and wealth, hosting diplomatic meetings, state visits, and grand events that underscore the family's global influence. Moreover, the Saudi royal family has curated a remarkable art collection spanning centuries and encompassing diverse styles and mediums. This collection includes traditional Islamic art and contemporary masterpieces reflecting their commitment to cultural heritage and artistic excellence. Their acquisition of Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi for $450 million outbidding Qatari rivals garnered global attention and underscored their prominence in the art world. This painting, depicting Christ as the saviour of the world, highlighted their significant presence in the global art market. Displayed prominently in palaces like Al Yama in Riyadh, these artworks include pieces by renowned artists such as Pablo Picasso, Jeff Koons and Takashi Murakami, showcasing their deep appreciation for artistic expression and cultural legacy. The Saudi royal family's art collection enhances the luxurious interiors of their palaces, reflecting their sophisticated taste. Beyond their residences, these artworks are showcased in global museums and cultural institutions, underscoring their cultural contributions. Their patronage extends to supporting artists from Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, providing global platforms for their talent. This commitment to cultural heritage is also evident in their efforts to restore ancient mosques, palaces and archaeological sites, preserving these treasures for future generations. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman owns the magnificent Super Yacht Serene, valued at $400 million, a pinnacle of luxury. It features an internal seawater pool, helipads, game rooms and even an underwater viewing room, epitomizing opulence and entertainment. Another prestigious yacht in their fleet is the Prince Abdulaziz, a 482-foot marvel equipped with multiple pools, a spa and a helipad, offering unparalleled comfort at sea. Their fleet of private jets includes a customized Boeing 747-400 transformed into a flying mansion, complete with lavish furnishings and gold-plated fixtures, akin to a five-star hotel in the sky. These assets reflect not just their personal indulgence, but also their status and global influence, facilitating travel for diplomatic visits and philanthropic missions worldwide. Recently, Princess Fada bint Fala al-Hithlain, Queen of Saudi Arabia, vacationed in Morocco, arriving in Tangier with palace officials and guards, later staying at her palace in Jabila. Joined by friends and fellow princesses from UAE and Kuwait, they explored Tangier's coastal beauty before heading to Marrakesh, renowned for its vibrant culture and red buildings, a favourite destination for celebrities like Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez and Oprah Winfrey. However, despite her regal status and privileges, Princess Fada faces challenges like non-visibility and gender inequality pervasive in the Arab world. Highlighting broader societal issues Arab women confront even in positions of prominence. Even within Saudi Arabia, often perceived as making strides in progressive reforms, women still encounter significant barriers and restrictions that impede their full participation in society. Despite notable advancements such as the recent lifting of the ban on women driving and increased opportunities in education and employment, gender disparities persist across various facets of life. 
women in Saudi Arabia continue to confront limitations on their freedom of movement, constraints on decision-making autonomy without male consent, and inequalities in legal rights and protections. Despite incremental progress in recent years, they remain marginalized and excluded from broader public engagement. Arab women have historically struggled to amplify their voices and secure recognition for their rights. They are often confined to traditional gender roles and societal norms, which diminish their visibility and hinder their ability to advocate effectively or participate meaningfully in decision-making processes. A significant challenge for Arab women is the prevalence of gender-based violence, including sexual harassment, assault and domestic abuse, which persists due to societal stigma and inadequate legal safeguards. The Arab Spring, initially promising greater freedoms and equality for all, unfortunately failed to deliver meaningful change for women. Instead, it highlighted enduring issues such as sexual violence, harassment and discrimination that women in Arab societies confront daily. During the Arab Spring uprisings, women played pivotal roles alongside men in protests, advocating for political reform and freedom. However, their involvement was often romanticized and short-lived. When their focus shifted to demanding gender equality and an end to discrimination, they encountered resistance and backlash, relegating them once more to secondary status. Despite these challenges, Qatar has made significant strides in education, with women constituting 70% of university students. This increase in educational opportunities has empowered women, equipping them with knowledge and skills to pursue their ambitions and challenge societal expectations. Nevertheless, persistent challenges remain, including cultural traditions like cousin marriages, which are deeply ingrained in Qatari society. For example, statistics from 2010 reveal that 47% of marriages in Qatar were between blood relatives, reflecting ongoing cultural norms that influence social dynamics and family structures. Cousin marriages, often seen as a means to preserve cultural identity and lineage, also pose potential risks such as increased prevalence of genetic disorders and health complications in offspring. Efforts are underway to address this issue through targeted awareness campaigns aimed at educating the public about these risks. These initiatives encourage individuals to consider alternative marital options and reflect on the long-term health implications for future generations. In Qatar, health institutions are actively involved in initiatives to tackle this concern, emphasizing the importance of safeguarding public health and promoting healthier family structures. However, it's crucial to balance the preservation of cultural practices with upholding women's social status and autonomy. While cousin marriages are deeply rooted in cultural traditions, they should not serve to restrict women to traditional roles or limit their agency. Recognizing that culture evolves, the younger generation in Qatar is increasingly embracing a global perspective while maintaining connections to their cultural heritage. This evolving mindset fosters a growing understanding that customs and traditions should not hinder women's ability to make independent choices about their lives. As societal attitudes toward marriage and family evolve, there is optimism that restrictive practices limiting women's choices will gradually diminish. This shift paves the way for greater gender equality and social progress in Qatar and beyond. Another contentious issue in Qatar revolves around the perception of domestic supervisors. A recent advertisement seeking Qatari women for domestic supervisor roles sparked controversy within the country. Critics argued that such advertisements undermine women's dignity and social status by perpetuating outdated stereotypes and limiting their opportunities for professional advancement. This reaction underscores the importance of challenging societal norms and recognizing the diverse roles that women can and should play in society. Arab women have historically faced misrepresentation and marginalization in Western media, often depicted as voiceless and confined by veils, which perpetuate stereotypes that fail to capture the complexity of their experiences. It's vital to acknowledge that Arab women have been pivotal in social and political movements. Standing alongside men in advocating for political reform, social justice and individual freedoms, their contributions have been marked by courage and resilience in challenging oppressive systems and striving for a more equitable society. 
Despite their active engagement across various spheres, Arab women remain significantly underrepresented in mainstream media. Studies indicate that they are featured in hard news stories only one-fifth as often as men, contributing to their ongoing invisibility in public discourse. This lack of representation not only hinders their advocacy for rights and interests, but also perpetuates harmful stereotypes and misconceptions, impeding progress toward gender equality and social justice. Amplifying the voices and experiences of Arab women is crucial, acknowledging their agency, diversity and significant contributions to society. In Egypt, for instance, women played pivotal roles in the revolution, yet their representation in politics remains sparse. Out of 508 parliamentary seats, only eight are held by women, with four aligned with the Muslim Brotherhood, a group historically opposed to women's rights. This disparity underscores the ongoing challenges Arab women face in achieving meaningful political representation. Despite some advancements, such as the right for women in Egypt to seek divorce without spousal permission, a right established in Islam centuries ago, progress in women's rights has been slow and uneven. The need for greater representation of women in leadership roles remains critical. Role models are essential in inspiring and empowering women to pursue such positions, challenging norms dominated by males and dismantling systemic barriers. The presence of women in politics signifies a significant shift, demonstrating that gender should not hinder success in governance. However, progressing from mere representation to substantive leadership requires addressing deep-seated biases and structural obstacles. Political empowerment and awareness are pivotal, with education serving as a catalyst for equipping women with skills to navigate complex political landscapes and assert their roles in decision-making. Yet, challenges persist, casting uncertainty on the trajectory of women's rights in certain Arab regions. The resurgence of political Islam in nations like Tunisia and Egypt has raised concerns about potential setbacks for women's rights. Some religious discourses seemingly contradict gender equality, often exploited to restrict women's rights using patriarchal interpretations of Islam. It is essential to differentiate between Islam's intrinsic principles of equality and justice and patriarchal interpretations that oppress women. Advocates for women's rights strive to promote an inclusive and egalitarian understanding of Islam, reclaiming it as a source of empowerment rather than oppression. This effort aims to create a future where women are not only visible, but also respected leaders in their communities and beyond. Recognizing the vast diversity among Arab women, spanning various backgrounds and experiences, is critical. Their stories and perspectives contribute to a broader narrative that deserves amplification and recognition. This approach ensures that women's rights and gender equality efforts are inclusive and equitable across all societal strata. If you enjoyed this content, click on the card displayed on your screen for more related videos.